Shovel Knight, a retro-inspired platformer made by Yacht Club Games, is one of the most satisfying gaming experiences I have had in the last decade. Everything about it, from the chunky pixel art to its catchy soundtrack, to the fact that the game received several amazing expansions. Shovel Knight shows that Yacht Club Games cares deeply about the details. In Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, Yacht Club asks the question of, what if the same level of care and expertise that categorizes the Shovel Knight platformers was applied to an entirely different type of game? The answer is a stunning blend of genres that is addictively fun and a blast to complete. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Guys, it's Super Bowl Sunday for me because I am talking about Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Let's go. A brand new indie game that is deviously difficult and yet a ton of fun. But now I want everyone to know, just because I have got a personal relationship with some of the fine folks at Yacht Club Games, I will do my best to give a totally unbiased review. All right, so here we go. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, hey. It's Jake Kaufman, a composer of Shovel Knight and composer of Big Bad Bosses. Hey, what's up, Jake? Yeah, man, these are going great. What's that? Oh, yeah, I totally just got the brand new vinyl for the game. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so stoked about it. Uh, I gotta go. We'll talk B3 stuff soon, okay? Great. All right, good night. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so as I was saying, Pocket Dungeon is a brand new... Sorry, just gotta silence this thing, I'm so sorry. Oh. Hey, it's Celia, uh, who's in charge of marketing at Yacht Club. Hey, what's up Celia, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, I did just get my brand new Yacht Club Games Shovel Knight t-shirt in, yes. It looks awesome. Oh, and you're sending a care package with more free stuff? Awesome, cool. I gotta go, but thank you so much. Great, all right. Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> As I was saying, Pocket Dungeon is going to be one of the most fun experiences. I'm going to try my best to give a totally unbiased review. Yo, Gerard, you ready? Oh, hey, Waz, co-founder of Yacht Club Games. Uh, what's up? What do you mean? It's pizza night with Waz. I brought your favorite. Shovel Knight! Yes! All glory goes to the winner! All right, so full disclosure, Yacht Club Games and I kind of go way back. Completing Shovel Knight Shovel of Hope helped me survive some really dark times. I'm really looking forward to the new game plus Shovel Knight episode considering how much new content that's waiting for me. It was my game of the decade when I made that top 10 a few years ago. But it isn't just that Shovel Knight and its many expansions make for a fantastic retro platforming experience. It's that Yacht Club has grown and developed in some incredibly inspiring ways. The company has expanded into publishing and financing other developers too. They ended up working with creator Mecha Skull, the creator of Cyber Shadow, which Yacht Club published earlier earlier this year. They also started working with Vine, the developer behind the Puzzle Knights, and that's where we are right now. In this situation, Vine had been working on a game called Puzzle Knights for quite some time. Yacht Club came across it and realized that this game might be just the perfect fit. They reached out to Vine to see if they could do business, and the match was made. Over the next few years, Yacht Club and Vine kept saying yes to each other and developed what eventually would become Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. The gameplay is similar to what was in Puzzle Knights, essentially a falling block puzzle game with adventure elements. Pocket Dungeon takes that gameplay and adds a layer of Shovel Knightness to it. In Pocket Dungeon, our favorite boy Shovel Knight is transported into another dimension, sucked into a puzzle box. Everything he knows is suddenly pocket-sized, and he has no idea how or why he's trapped in this dimension. 
As he traverses familiar landscapes and tries to free his friends and even his enemies, he must solve the mystery of how to escape and return to his own dimension. So the simple story serves as a fantastic way to take the Shovel Knight touchstones I know and love and place them in an entirely different context. Pocket Dungeon is a spin-off that does something new. For the longest time, I thought it was a straight up puzzle game, but it is far more than that. It incorporates roguelike elements like creating character builds, procedural generation, and item management in a really wonderful and in-depth way. It is a dungeon crawling puzzle adventure, maybe the first and best example of a totally new genre. The exaggerated art style calls to mind classic puzzle games like Puyo Puyo Tetris and even deeper cuts like Wario's Woods or Yoshi's Cookies. Instead of collecting new weapons and items to increase Shovel Knight's power and skill set on his quest to save Shield Knight, Pocket Dungeon takes mechanics from the original platformer and integrates them into a falling block style game. It's a wild combo, but I felt right at home. I have a lot of experience with roguelites and puzzle games, and with the Shovel Knight style, the game spoke a language I immediately understood. It's sort of difficult to explain how it all ties together, but I'll try and break it down. In every level, enemies and blocks slowly fill up the screen. Players control Shovel Knight, or one of many knights, who can move one tile at a time and battle enemies and collect items. Moving the player character speeds up the rate at which enemies and objects fill up the screen, so every move becomes very important. Stringing together chains is key, just like Candy Crush or any kind of match 3 plus game or what have you. Defeating a string of connected enemies will net the player a ton of gems which can then be spent on relics. Relics can be game-changing, like in any good roguelite, providing the player with new combat options or an unexpected advantage. There's a meter located at the very top of the screen that indicates how close the player character is to the exit of the stage. Shovel Knight must survive until the exit door appears, unlock it, and then it's on to the next stage. Soon enough, I was battling knights from across the Shovel Knight franchise, unlocking them as playable characters. The roguelike DNA, like the different characters with unique abilities and powers infused into Pocket Dungeon, is a huge boon for replayability. It also made me realize just how much I would have on my plate as I dug my way towards completion. Because as anyone who's ever played a roguelike knows, simply making it to the last level or seeing the final boss is absolutely not the same as completing the game. Since this is a Yacht Club game, I knew there would be challenging feats to accomplish. Pocket Dungeon has 51 of them, and those count as Steam achievements as well for PC users. But unlike many of the roguelikes out there that I've already smashed my head against lately, Pocket Dungeon didn't immediately make me feel overwhelmed. Part of that is definitely because I am pretty familiar with the structure of this game already, having played some previous builds during Indyland over the last several years. But also, it's the fact that Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon is designed to be extremely player friendly. It firmly has a foot in both camps of puzzle and roguelike game, and by nailing the best of both becomes an extremely compelling game to complete. to front load this essay with what completing this game actually looks like. A ton of stuff I like about Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon shines through the completion experience. I love puzzle games in general, and I demoed this game a lot, but I truly didn't understand the robustness until I played the final build. I locked into this game like I haven't in a long time with the title. Pocket Dungeon might seem like a linear experience at first. Go through every level, periodically beat the boss of that level, earn relics, and become strong enough to make it to the final stage and beat the end boss. A pocket dungeon quickly became a deeper and richer experience than I expected. After the very first victory against another knight, when I unlocked him as a playable character, I realized that I would be spending a lot more time at the starting camp than I initially anticipated. Though it may look entirely different from mainline entries, it is a very Shovel Knight thing to have a central hub to circle back to between defeats. So this hub is where all the unlockable characters are sent to after defeating them in the field. On top of that, there's the relic shop run by Chester, where I could purchase relics with gems I'd acquire to unlock them during runs. This is also where Myriad, the mysterious costume salesman, hangs out as well. Every character has 10 different color skins to purchase. The hub is packed with secrets and fun characters, and even mini games in a fast travel station. I had to spend a lot of time here between runs, but it never bothered me. I could see the work put into it 
to make it feel alive. The more I played, the more I appreciated how the developers didn't just slap a simple Shovel Knight skin on everything and call it a day. It's easy to see that Vine and Yacht Club worked hand in hand to make sure everything fit together. The Shovel Knight mechanics fused with Puzzle Knight's gameplay is brilliant, but it's the aesthetics that tie everything together. Despite the visually distinct art style, the entire package screams Shovel Knight in the best way possible. The way that different enemy types act like they would if they were still in a Shovel Knight platformer is a stroke of genius. I could basically anticipate enemy behavior because I was so familiar with the original Shovel Knight games, which really helped me succeed early on. But I tried to see things from the perspective of a newcomer too, because I think this game has incredible crossover appeal. If I were someone who knew nothing about Shovel Knight, would I still be able to complete complete this game? To me, the answer is a resounding yes, and part of that is how well Pocket Dungeon teaches players how to implement strategy over time. This game throws players right into the mix with very few tutorials, and I think this is to the game's benefit. Very quickly, players will learn that even though Shovel Knight looks powerful, battles are far from simple. The game encourages players to take their time, and as they grow more and more comfortable chaining together combos, they'll go faster and play more efficiently. Mastering strategy and maximizing how many gems I could earn from even the most simple of battles started to feel really, really good. Learning and developing strategies comes into play very quickly for completion. So for example, in every stage past the first one, there is a hidden portal. They're almost impossible to miss once found. And the hint of finding them is to seek out the one different colored block within the many dropping enemies that I was destroying. In these portals, the player can encounter a number of different things. Quick challenges to clear the room, a discounted but perhaps risky chance to get relics, a room full of chests with free items, and the most important, the absolutely necessary opportunity to get all of the key fragments. There are four key fragments the player must collect before reaching the final boss. If all of the key fragments are collected, after you defeat said final boss, another stage is unlocked and will lead you to the true secret boss fight and the path to the quote unquote good ending. Fortunately, the game is fairly straightforward in signposting which stages will have these special portals. Just look at that statue right outside of the map. The game even goes so far as making the necessary gating mechanics to reach those keys the exact same every single time. So there's no mystery as to what a player will need to do in order to get a key fragment. Once you've easily purchased all the relics from Chester, the builds are plentiful and will expand your mind. Having my strategies nailed down helped me execute what I needed when I needed, because I would have to earn this good ending for every unlockable character in the game in order to complete it, as there is a percentage stat that is tracking your completion process as well as the feat attached to every single character. I have gushed at great lengths about my love for my friend and musical confidant genius, the great Jake Kaufman, but the music for Pocket Dungeon is just so unbelievably good. There are remixes and brand new tracks that are just as good if not better than the original Shovel Knight tracks. Every track is just the freaking best. It feels so fresh like everything else in Pocket Dungeon. Pocket Dungeon is walking a fine line, but it manages the balancing act perfectly. This game gets a ton of mileage out of being a Shovel Knight spinoff. But there is also a legitimately great and monstrously addictive game here on its own. What makes it truly wonderful, in my opinion, is that this feels like a roguelite without any of the BS the genre is known for. This game does two things extremely well, encouraging replayability and lets me break the game in my favor. All of this contributes towards completion in the best way possible. Now, I enjoy the hell out of playing roguelike games, but sometimes it's a love-hate relationship. Inevitably, I've ended up completing a few for the show, and it becomes a chore to think of the interesting ways to talk about them all. And most of the time, it boils down to, this game is incredibly fun and innovative for a few dozen hours, but after a couple hundred, 
I stopped enjoying myself. To me, the language stops being interesting to describe this genre. But with Pocket Dungeon, I'm happy to say that completion remains an undeniably fun experience. Even though Pocket Dungeon nearly succumbs to the pitfalls of the genre, it definitely evades those traps. Pocket Dungeon is simple to pick up and play. Runs are relatively quick, especially compared to something like Hades or Dead Cells. Add in the fact that there is sort of a level skip option and so much customization, like the different knights and all the relics, meant that even the toughest feats never felt out of reach. It is really hard to get bored in this game, and that is not something I've said about almost any other roguelike thus far. It's a lot of setup to make it to the good ending, but creating a good build with Shovel Knight himself, or really any other character, is satisfying. There is always an element of chaos in finding relics that will actually be helpful and carry you to the end of the game. And there's the biggest factor of all, which is something that players can flick on or off pretty much whenever they want. The amount of stocks on hand. I can choose whether I wanted to play this game like a true roguelite and be sent back to the camp every time I died in battle, or I could turn on infinite stock and only return to the beginning where the screen gets filled up either way. And there is a ton of variation within those options as well. Pocket Dungeon doesn't gate any of its feats behind playing with a certain number of stocks. The accessibility options are extremely robust, but I found that playing Pocket Dungeon more like a puzzle game with infinite stocks was ideal for completion and my overall level of enjoyment. There was slightly less pressure since it's easier to die in a fight than to have the entire screen fill up and you have to get your way out of the trouble you put yourself into. Unlocking different knights and relics is really easy at first, which makes getting into this game a snap. Without trying all that hard, players can start experimenting with different knights and their play styles very soon after starting the game. I personally grew to love Propeller Knight, who to me embodies the essence of the roguelike. He's totally broken. Half the fun of this kind of game is finding a class or a weapon that lets you feel unstoppable. And for me, that was Propeller Knight in a nutshell. Truthfully, I found something to love about all the play styles of every knight. Building a big mech with Tinker Knight is always awesome, and the healing powers of Spectre Knight are too powerful to ignore, although he does get poisoned when you do drink potions. Again, the fact that every knight's powers from the original Shovel Knight are perfectly translated here is an incredible feat of design. Learning the intricacies of every knight made the feats list much more comprehensible. Every knight has multiple feats attached to them and not just for unlocking them and earning their true endings. There are specific challenges associated too, such as raising black knight's base damage above eight or finishing a level using the new character prism knight without taking more than 10 steps. These character specific feats teach the player how to use that character very effectively. And though I found most of the feats to be pretty achievable at first glance, there were definitely a few that were pretty difficult. The hardest in the game, hands down, was one that actually ended up taking about one third of my entire playtime. And that was for beating the game without picking up any relics to assist you. I loved that this feat can only be earned by players who have mastered a character's quirks. There are no shortcuts as even using Percy's fast travel to skip a few levels grants the player meal ticket relics, which will give them health. I finally ended up being able to do all of this using Propeller Knight. If he defeats a solo enemy, his base attack raises permanently until that chain is ruined. So by smartly setting myself up, I was able to avoid chains and use his insanely powerful attacks to make it to the very end of the game. The more I unlocked characters and earned feats, the more I appreciated that it's the characters themselves that changed the game. The core of Pocket Dungeon remains pretty much the same throughout, but the different skills and movement options of the unlockable knights makes runs feel completely different. Shovel Knight finds more potions and levels, which made me play completely different than, let's say, Spectre Knight, who heals himself by killing enemies, but can't use potions at all. Mole Knight has the ability to just swap places with any unit in the field. Plague Knight only does one damage, but when he pokes an enemy, they get cursed for a few rounds. This is a really cool and innovative way to make runs shine with the uniqueness that Yacht Club excels at. A player should recognize that just because they found the knight for them doesn't mean things will be a walk in the park. Certain levels and bosses may prove particularly tricky. For me, I would always shudder whenever I needed to square off against Tinker Knight in battle. And any time that damn Yeti would show up, I feared my run would get wrecked. But you can always tip these things in your favor 
with some patience and some resourcefulness with relics and chests. Of course, there's a feat for purchasing and unlocking every one of Chester's relics, and I grew to have a few favorites. There are a couple that are much more powerful than others, which, when found, help you succeed. The Swift Dagger and the Third Amulet are hugely successful, letting the player character deal extra damage on certain attacks. The Swift Dagger acts as a first attack bonus, which does two damage upon attacking an enemy for the first time. And the Third Amulet allows you to do two damage on your third hit. The Static Electricity the socks allows you to be immune to all electric damage and on your 10th hit you will do two damage instead of one and if you get the fifth amulet on your fifth hit you'll just do a second hit of damage getting all of those relics together will make you a scary beast the relic system of pocket dungeon may not be as involved as other roguelikes but it still gives players a chance to create different builds and i didn't mind the chaos that the relics bring even though it does become a bit of a grind to collect every single one of them. Now, one criticism I do have here is that there really aren't that many relics to purchase from Chester overall. This meant that eventually, after a few runs, I had stored up thousands of gems that didn't really have much use. Even buying every costume for every character isn't a huge expense. And the cost of the minigame with Mona doesn't cost that much either. So Pocket Dungeon doesn't have as big of a currency problem as let's say Hades, but I sort of wish that this game treated currency like one of my other favorite roguelites, Enter the Gungeon. There should be more of an excuse to spend currency than there is currently in this game. In fact, that speaks to my biggest issue with Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon, something that I've been thinking about since the original Shovel Knight games. I love it so much that once I completed it, I wanted more. It's more of an observation, really, that once you've earned that true ending for every character, you're essentially done with the whole game. Yeah, there is the daily challenges, but even within that, I haven't encountered too much variety. I would have loved to have seen Yacht Club Games or Vine go super hard on a challenge mode or something with crazy modifiers that go beyond get as far as you can with X character in the endless mode. I wanted to go even further with the roguelike nature of this game, giving Pocket Dungeon even more longevity, but I digress. That said, I do appreciate that completion is mostly tied to player skill rather than random unlocks. If a player manages to obtain all four key fragments before the Puzzle Knight boss fight, they can battle the Enchantress from the original Shovel Knight. This earns you the true ending for that playthrough for that specific character. And completion requires doing that specific set of things with every playable character, which means both mastering their mechanics, making them as broken as possible with relics, and then also collecting all the key fragments in one good run. So there was inevitably some runs I had to replay to earn the true endings for that character because sometimes I wasn't good enough to get all of the key fragments in a single run. But this is an important part Part of the legacy of roguelites. Players can't always predict how a run will go. That's core to the genre, and I wouldn't change that about Pocket Dungeon even if I could. The game was designed to be replayed over and over and have secrets that can only be understood after dozens of playthroughs. Even on a less than ideal run, I still earned gems that I could spend on character costumes or other unlocks. So I rarely felt like I was wasting my time, even though I wish there was more things to spend my money on. Earning every costume for every character isn't that bad of an expensive proposition, but with the proper strategy, earning gems was a breeze. And reaching the end of the game with a character unlocked a gold costume for them as well. And you know me, I love a good completion bonus, even if it's only a costume. But fortunately, that wasn't the only bonus at hand. There is an unlockable endless mode, which you can find by earning the true ending. I think this is super cool. A good compromise to me simply wanting more game. Because at the end of the day, I fell in love with Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon. Endless mode was the perfect bonus because I could play as any character and just let it rip. Puzzle games often have endless modes, but roguelikes very rarely have this equivalent, and having one here felt very satisfying to me. It's funny that I found the endless mode to be a great completion bonus because one of the things I love about Pocket Dungeon is how self-contained its story is. It simply feels like a very Yacht Club story, wholesome and full of payoff. The DNA of Shovel Knight's surprisingly tender storytelling is here. I really loved how completing this game by earning the true endings connects and repairs the estranged relationship between Prison Knight and Puzzle Knight. Yacht Club stories have payoff. 
and Pocket Dungeon is no exception to this. That all being said, I didn't earn anything extra for getting all 51 feats. In the 48 hours it took for me to complete this game, I was able to hit most of the feats and buy every costume and relic relatively pain free. And if it sounds like I'm complaining because I want more, it's because I always want more Yacht Club. I think Pocket Dungeon is amazing. It's simply that after learning the ins and outs of every character, I wanted even more opportunities to use those skills I've learned in game. But who knows, maybe Pocket Dungeon will receive five expansions in its base game, and soon enough, we'll have a Pocket Dungeon treasure trove. I am so sorry for putting it out there in the world, Yacht Club, but uh, best of luck figuring that one out. There's no sugarcoating it, folks. I have loved everything the Yacht Club games has touched, and if Shovel Knight is involved with something, I'm definitely gonna play it. But Pocket Dungeon stands strong on its own, a great testament to the base game that Vine built and Yacht Club iterated on. I love playing this game, that it's finally out after waiting so long. It's extremely cool. It has been well worth the wait. Satisfying like the best round of Tetris and heartwarming like only Yacht Club games can be, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon will surprise and delight even the most jaded players. I can't think of a more fitting game to end the year on than this. However, I do want to make a solid point. I know that I have been joking about my unbiased viewpoint of Shovel Knight, and that's something I want to talk about. Yeah, uh, I am aware that my career has led me to make great, has led me to create great opportunities, meeting developers, getting to know them, and that blurs the line, right? That that's kind of the whole like ethics of game reviewers and journalism online in the space of influencers and games today. So with that said, for the first time ever in the history of the show, uh, I will not be giving this game any kind of rating, just because, truth be told, one, I think ratings are dumb. But two, I'm obviously biased. Look at me. Look at all of this. I love Yacht Club games. They make great games, and I love completing their games. But I don't think I should be able to be like, hey, buy this game because I'm the number one fan. It's kind of hard to say that, right? I know that I have a great relationship with Nintendo and all these other companies, but with Yacht Club, they're family to me. And I want to make that as clear as possible. So with that said, if I were to get this game a rating, it obviously would be completed. But right now, I'm just going to say, enjoy the game. And hopefully you enjoy more games like it. Thanks for watching, and enjoy Pocket Dungeon.